All right, so at the beginning, we started with a particle is moving towards the wall of the container. It collides with the container. It has an elastic collision with the container. It bounces back off at the same speed but opposite direction. And so there's an impulse imparted to the particle uh, by the wall. And then there's, so that means that there's a force from the particle on the wall and from the wall onto the particle. And so we can look at the force on the wall. Um, as being part of the, the velocity, the change in velocity of our, our object. Now, um, if we're just looking at a particle that happens to be moving horizontally so that its average velocity is only in the x direction, an average velocity would be distance divided by time, and the total distance from one collision to another, back to where it started from, is um, 2 times delta L. So solving for delta T there, we can substitute that into our force equation. And if our average velocity is the average velocity in the x direction, then we can have, we get this um, mvx squared over delta L. Okay, so now I've got this um, expression for the force that one particle that's moving in only the x direction applies to the wall. But what if there are bunches of particles, like, like an n number of particles? And they're not moving in only the x direction. They're moving in the x direction, the y direction, the z direction. But on average, they all have the same velocity because it's one container of one kind of ideal gas bouncing around. So then the average velocity, do you remember you can find velocity as being like the sum of the squares, like the Pythagorean theorem? But it would be, they would also be moving in the z direction. But if the velocity in the y direction is the average velocity in the y direction is the same as the average velocity in the x direction and the average velocity in the z direction is equal to the average velocity in the x direction because they all have the same average velocity doesn't matter which direction the particle may be moving if it's an x moving or a y moving or a z moving particle so then the average velocity of n number of particles squared would be 3 v x squared, right? Because they will all be equal. So then v x squared would be equal to v squared divided by 3. So what is the force that n number of particles puts on the wall? Well, if force was m v x squared over delta L, I can make a substitution. So I have M times V squared over 3 divided by delta L, can't get rid of him yet, times the number of particles. Because that velocity that I've substituted right here is all the velocities, all the average velocities. Okay, now I'm going to make this look a little bit neater. So I could rewrite this as um, n, let's see, n divided by 3 delta L times m v squared would be the force on the wall. Now, mv squared, I bet I could grab the a 2 and divide by a 2, and that's legal. Yeah? So then this looks like, this looks like 2 thirds the number of particles divided by the distance across the container times 
the average kinetic energy is equal to F. Because if it's average velocity, then it's average kinetic energy. So far, so good? Okay, now if I remember, isn't pressure related to force? Pressure is what? Force per area? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, if I take see, force is equal to pressure times area. So let's make a substitution. Let's say three halves times the number of particles um, divided by the length of the container, the cross length of the container, times the average kinetic energy of a particle would be equal to, if force is pressure times area, pressure times area. I've been dragging around this delta L. What if I multiply both sides by delta L? I would have P A delta L is equal to three halves the number of particles times K average. No, it's not right. No, it's not right. Hey, Greg. <laughs> so this should have been what? Two thirds? Yeah. All right. Two thirds, right? Two thirds here. And then two thirds there. Two thirds here. And then still two thirds here. Okay, I got flipped over. What is area times length? Do you remember? Volume. So the PV equals two thirds N times average kinetic energy. <coughs> Making a big deal about that average because it's not exactly the kinetic energy of any particle. It is the average. Some of them may be a little more, some of them may be a little less, but on average. Okay. Now, do you remember from chemistry? There's something that starts out PV. PV equals NRT. PV equals NRT. So hopefully you remember this is pressure. What is the V? Volume, the same kind of volume that we've been studying. Do you remember what N stood for? Is the number of moles. And R was the it was the gas constant. And then what was what does this stand for? Temperature? In Kelvin. in Kelvin. Very good. And our pressure needs to be in Pascal. Our volume needs to be in meters cubed. And we're going to use a gas constant that is in those uh, metric units as well. Okay. We'll get there soon enough. Okay. So then if, oh, if PV is equal to NRT and PV equals two-thirds capital N, K average, then could I say that the number of moles times the gas constant times the temperature is equal to two-thirds times the number of particles times the average kinetic energy? So now N is the number of moles and capital N is the number of particles. And if I remember chemistry correct, isn't the number of particles per mole equivalent to like Avogadro's number? Okay. Which is just a nice constant, so it doesn't matter how many moles or how many particles I have. I don't have to even do that um, sort of calculation there. So, um, let's see. That means that I could say that T is equal to two-thirds the number of particles over the number of moles, and then K average, that's the average <coughs> kinetic energy, divided by R. 
I left this guy right here so I because that can be written as Avogadro's number uh, I in physics books we write it as n sub a I'm not sure and then um, I'm going to divide by my gas law constant and then K average. So the temperature is equal to two thirds, the ratio of Avogadro's number to the gas law constant, which sounds like what? If you take a constant divided by a constant, constant. you get some other constant, right? Um, so now we typically define this as kinetic energy, the average kinetic energy then is 3 halves R divided by Avogadro's number times temperature. So I just flipped it around. Did I get my 3's and 2's in the right place that time? And if you look it up in a book, R divided by Avogadro's constant, so the gas law constant divided by Avogadro's number, is equal to what we call K sub B, which is Boltzmann's constant. So the R for the gas law constant, and you'll always be given this, you do not have to memorize it, is 8.31 joules per mole times Kelvin. Now remember, a joule is a newton times a meter, and a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, so all of our units are in metric units, no milliliters or anything like that, okay? And then the Boltzmann's constant, K sub B, is 1.38 times 10 to the negative 23 <clears throat> joules, which is again another metric unit, divided by Kelvin. So the average kinetic energy would be equivalent to 3 halves K sub B times T where our temperature has to be measured in kelvins. And this Boltzmann's constant is up here, and it's joules per kelvin. So if you have joules per kelvin time kelvin, what do you get? Joules. Joules. And what's the unit for energy? Joules. And when kinetic energy is energy. Yay, kinetic energy. <clears throat> Measured in jokes. <laughs>